Uh, your your reaction, Barry, to what is, I mean, we all knew we were going to have to have this conversation at some point. I imagine Ollie knew this conversation was going to happen at some point as well. Well, my immediate reaction, as always, Max, is to think, wonder aloud, how is this going to affect me? Yep. Uh, producer Sam said my ear as the opening music was, was playing that uh, I could print you a running order, Barry, but it's all gone out the window now. We have to wing it, Max. Yeah, okay. But we're we're young, we we're adaptable. Yeah. Yes. The running order we had, I think, was going to be the greatest two hours of radio of all time. It will never exist. But now we're broadcasting on the fly. This will test our metal. Are we up <laughs> to the job? Are we more competent uh, than Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, who we're going to be talking about, who was clearly thrown in at the deep end. Um, he has paid the price for Manchester United's poor performances because it's been said he tactically not up to it. I think if he goes, there are certain par- people who should go with him, namely the people who've just fired him. But they won't, of course, because that's not how it works in football. No, but they're I mean, equally, if not more, incompetent than he was. I couldn't agree more. I mean, Woodward is going. But look, they missed out on what Tuchel, cool, probably. They missed out on Pochettino. They missed out on Conte. Obsessed with this idea of DNA of a football club, which is just complete nonsense. You know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is not an elite coach. He might be one day, but he isn't. He got pretty lucky away at PSG. Everyone went mad in the Champions League, you know, a couple of years ago, whatever. And they dole up amazingly long contracts. I read somewhere that Mike Phelan got a three-year contract 47 days ago. I mean, you're absolutely right. Solskjaer wasn't the right man for the job. The players... Look, it's a top-heavy squad. It's a weirdly imbalanced squad. But the players are better than those performances. They were absolutely abject yesterday. And when the manager says, I don't really know what happened, but that was our worst performance. When your goalkeeper, one of your senior professionals, says, we don't know what to do with the ball and we don't know how to defend. (laughs) These these are two quite important details for a football club that has spent, I don't know, next to a billion pounds in the last however many years. Um, Listen, we'll take your reaction. Uh, The phone number is 03717 three double four uh john is a manchester united fan freddie's a manchester united fan hey john how are you doing guys good morning yeah, Matt. good morning barry good morning to you john uh, the uh the airwaves are yours tell us what you're thinking well i've been a man united fan i'm 54 years of age i've been a man united fan more or less all my life i couldn't believe when Solskjaer actually got the job how lucky he was to get the job he had one performance against PSG, and like Barry said, very, very lucky there. He should never have been in the job. And I think for all those who are feeling sorry for him, I'm one Manchester United fan, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm one Manchester United fan that is smiling from cheek to cheek this morning, and I'm sure my son is as well. I really am, honestly. John, when he got the job, it's important to remember the club was on its knees. Morale was rock bottom after the Jose Marino doing his Jose Marino thing on the club. And I remember when they beat PSG, they were slightly fortuitous. But the vibe of, of the pundits, Rio Ferdinand saying, you know, let him write out his own contract, give it to him immediately. He he did, to an extent, bring the feel-good factor back to Old Trafford after a, a horrible time under Jose Marina. Would you be prepared to concede that at least? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, 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 a... Well, it gave us a little bit of hope, those, those people as well. How would you say that? Yeah, it gave us hope, but... No, not at all, not at all. I, I, I'm still in the in in the process of thinking myself that Man is the man for Manchester United. All oh, right. Rather than all waiting for the likes of Leicester's manager to you know buy him out of contract so on. Look at Man City. What he, he he actually turned Manchester City around. He he was the beginning of Manchester City. We need that back at Old Trafford. We need that. Um, John, thanks so much for call. Cool. Thanks for kicking off the show. Appreciated it. Freddie is a Man United fan as well. Hello, Freddie. Good morning, guys. How are you getting on? Great, uh, yeah, thanks. we're tremendous. I mean, we don't have a dog in the fight here. I, I was sort of, uh, in a way, I'm I'm sort of happy that I no longer to ha- have to have the conversation, when will Ole go? I can have the Ole's going and then we can move on to something else next week. How do you feel? Uh, well, look, uh, mixed emotions, to be honest with you, gents. I mean, the thing that, 
that's really hurt me the most is um, watching my son being subjected uh, to loss after loss after loss over the course of the past few weeks. Um, it's just been really depressing, to be honest with you. But uh, inevitably, this was bound to happen. I'm just a little bit frustrated uh, that we didn't make this decision earlier because I really felt Conte was our man. Look, Conte took a team that was languishing in 10th position in the Premier League and the following year they won the title. Um, this guy's the real deal and I'm, and I'm just a little bit frustrated that we didn't act a little bit sooner to, to, bring, him, uh, to bring him to Old Trafford. Uh, I disagree with your previous caller. I don't think Mancini's the right man for United. Uh, I, I think moving forward, we probably need somebody like Poch, uh, Pochettino. Um, I don't really rate Brendan Rodgers either, to be honest with you, and he's not having a very good time of it at, at Leicester at this moment in time. Um, j- just, just frustrated, to be honest with you guys. Um, I mean, we've got a blockbuster squad uh, of players that should be doing much, much better um, than, than what they're doing at the moment. So, yeah, frustration, but... You know, inevitably this decision was, um, you know, was bound to happen. It should have just happened a little bit earlier. What do you guys think, and in particular, what do you think about Conte? Well, I, I, I agree I'm, with I'm you. In, uh, sorry, carry on, Baz. Uh, I'm, I'm intrigued. You have an opinion on who the manager should be. Uh, John, a previous caller, had an opinion on the manager, who the manager should be. Do you think the United Club hierarchy actually have a clear idea who, of who the manager should be? Uh, to be honest with you, no, I don't. Uh, I don't think they have a clear idea. There's been so many names being banded about. Zidane, uh, the gentleman from Ajax, Brendan Rodgers, you know, so many names being banded about. I don't think that they have a clear idea. I don't even think that they have a clear strategy, uh, to be honest with you, moving forward, guys. Um, I, I, to, to be honest with you, I mean, me, me, neither try, to be fair, um, but, but I think somebody of the ilk of Poch, uh, I think he'd be a tremendous appointment for us. We're not going to get him now, um, we may potentially get him at the you know the end of the season. Um, I think in the meantime we're just going to have to make do with somebody in the interim. Perhaps Carrick and uh, and and uh, and Fletcher um, leading the guys until the end of the season. I'm not entirely sure, but you know the one thing that hurts the most is, like I said to you at the beginning of the call, you know just seeing my son. You know my son would actually come to me every day and he'd say, uh, Dad, I think we're going to lose today, uh, and, and he says that every single weekend. You know, when, when does that ever happen, you know? Um, you're always expecting United to win and to win comfortably. Um, do you, so sorry, do you mind me asking, what, what age is your son? So, my son's eight. He's actually sitting right next to me at the moment. We're getting ready for his uh, Sunday football match. Uh, oh, at big game. Today. Well, um, good luck to him, yeah. but I, I think it's character building for an eight-year-old to see his team lose week after week after week, if, if you don't mind me saying so. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's been devastating for him, and particularly with Ronaldo coming on board. You know, I mean, you know, Ronaldo's his idol, um, and and he's my idol as well. And I generally thought with Ronaldo coming on board, this was it. We were going to start winning week in, week out. You know, right up there at the top of the table, but it's just not happened, and it's been quite deflating, to be honest with you guys. So, does does um does your eight year old is he only in it to score goals for himself, like Ronaldo? Or is he is he part of the team? So he's he's very greedy. He, he loves scoring goals. <laughs> he absolutely loves scoring scores. Carlo, do you want to say anything to the guys? I'm a big Man United fan. <laughs> How are you feeling about Ollie going? I uh, miss him. He misses him. Yeah, he misses him already. Wow, that was quick. Oh, look, he's welcome back at the club anytime. Cheers, Freddie. Thank you to your boy as well. Appreciate it. Uh, one more before the break. Dylan's a Manchester United fan. Hey, Dylan. Hello there, hi. Yeah, can I just say the contrasting calls, the first call was absolutely spot on, really enjoyed that. The second call is everything that's wrong with Man United fans. I grew up, I grew up in, the, in the 80s when Man United won nothing. I was crying as a kid, it, it was something I accepted. That Scottish kid has seen us lose five games and he's, and he's going to jump off a cliff and his dad's egging him on with it. Right, listen, I'll, I'll quickly go through it. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was not the plan for United manager. He came in, he, sta- he stabled the club, and basically it was a thing where the team performed so well that all of the, the, the results that we got, we couldn't not give him the job. Even third, um, uh, Ferdinand and everyone were saying give him the job. It was not the intention. He got the job, he's brought a load of players in. He's done, it, it, the squad's a lot better than it was when, when, when he took over with the, squad, uh, with, with the last manager, the rubbish that he brought in. Mourinho brought in players like Lindelof, um, who basically couldn't pass a football. Bailly, who was erratic. 
and we brought in a couple of players that should have changed our, our squad for this season. They've all been injured. We've had the, the fallout from the World Cup. Rashford's now a politician more than he's a footballer. He's not. He, he chose England over United. He was injured all, all, all while he was sat on the bench. He's now he's now not played properly since since the European uh, Championships, um, and he's not fit. You've got you've got a couple of players who've been out injured who we didn't expect to be injured, like. Um, Pogba's had his issues, Maguire's had his issues, you've, you've, you've got issues with Cavani. We brought Ronaldo in, which wasn't the intention. It's, it's disrupted the balance of the squad. The reality is, Oli, Oli shouldn't have been the manager. We need to get somebody in, but give the guy some respect. I get to all the games, home and away, not like your Scottish people who've probably never been, and, and, and going, on about losing, going on about losing five games and are we expected to be top of the league. You've got Man City with the best manager in the world, cheating, with money, we're bringing in players, and financial fair play doesn't exist. You've got Klopp, who's amazing, who's turned Liverpool into a great team, who for 30 years were nothing. And now we expect to be top all the time just because we're Man United. We've spent a load of money. Don't do the glazier crap with me. Yeah, we have taken a load of money out, but we spent as much as the other clubs. It's just the managers we brought in have bought rubbish players who are technically inept on the ball. Basaka can't pass a football. You've got our midfield, McTominay, Matic, can't pass a football. Van der Beek yesterday looked outstanding when he came on. Play the lad, give him a bit of a chance. Ole wasn't up to it tactically, but please, let's not all expect that we have to win it all the time. We've won 13 leagues out of 25. Just accept it, and it's going to be a rebuilding process.